Hello, so I was just asked how to initialize um, my plugin ADSR in Cubase. So this video will just be specifically about that. So I prepared a little epic pad, it sounds like this. <laughs> plug-in showcasing. I just like to do that because I used Solaris which was um, one of the winners of the last KVR developer challenge and uh, I also voted for Solaris so that was pretty cool. Now I have another MIDI track here and it has this sequence on it and I want this sequence to be imposed on the epic pad. Um, first of all, the difference between these tracks is this one is an instrument track and this one is a MIDI track. You know, when you right click, you can generate instrument or MIDI tracks. Uh, the problem with instrument tracks is they cannot send on the MIDI, at least not that I know. And MIDI tracks can that for some can do that for some, for some reason. I once made a video in which I ranted about how stupid that is and stuff but in this video I will just skip all that and just show how it's being used. So you have this MIDI track and this MIDI track lets you select an output. For example the epic pad. Now the sequence plays the instrument on the other track which makes no sense uh, of course but um, there is not much else to choose from here can send it into the Raum reverb. Does it even do anything? Okay, whatever. Apparently the plugin Raum has a MIDI input without really using it. Anyway, you have to add another instance of ADSR on the audio uh, like in the effect chain of the audio that you want to be different. This is the effect chain of the epic pad and there is ADSR. Now that an instance of ADSR exists we can select it uh, in the MIDI output box of this MIDI track you know. And you can even decide on which channel it should send the MIDI but in this case it really doesn't matter so let's just choose all of them. And um, yeah, you don't have to care about anything else. You can keep the MIDI inputs in here if you want to play something live with your uh, master keyboard. Or you could turn it off just to be safe that nothing will interfere with this perfect sequence. And now the sequence is imposed on the epic pad. <laughs> Now by default the plugin is in direct out mode <coughs> which doesn't make a lot of sense sonically it sounds like this and it sounds like this because it was um, meant for other doors doors that can translate a pure CV signal into uh, a modulation signal for parameters As you can see this just generates DC offset that has the curve of this modulator. We, you can not use that in Cubase because Cubase still has no workflow for parameter modulation for some reason. Even though Reaper and FL Studio already have. And of course Bitwig has it even more but you know. Um, Bitwig is not the only door anymore. That's all I want to say. So now uh, you change this to the gain mode. And this is already the default setting that I have here in Cubase. I would also encourage everyone who uses Cubase to make this the default setting of this parameter. Because now instead of just direct outing the modulator, it uses it to change the gain of the signal. Um, yeah, and that's pretty useful for a uh, trans gate. <laughs> So 
So sometimes the behavior of the um, envelope generator is a little bit weird when there are a lot of nodes overlapping or coming in short intervals so that the release time cannot really fade out before the attack time comes in again. So I made different legato modes and one of them always works pretty well. Unfortunately I forgot how they work exactly so I can't explain it now but I think that just by trying the three different modes uh, you can always find something that just works and that's what's important. So let's just try something. <laughs> Yeah, this one has no weird discontinuities, that's cool. Um, now, uh, let me, while we're at it, also give you some control advice. This is the attack time, obviously. And you can change if it should be look ahead or not, the attack time. If you choose a too high attack time, then there is a little red rectangle showing you that this cannot be compensated anymore with the look ahead as long that there is no red rectangle you can choose this time with look ahead uh, and that would mean that at this point there is the MIDI note instead of at this point that, that can be useful for sequences especially when you're using it on drums where you want to preserve transients or for some reason you, you use it on drums, but you still want to attack the uh, time before the transient. Or for kick bass kind of scenarios for side chaining. And um, yeah, in this case, you could turn it off because then it acts more like a normal synthesizer where the attack time comes after the note. And you can add another, essentially just another envelope to your synthesizer that way. <laughs> Now by default, decay and release are linked, as you can see here, which is useful if you want to make bell-shaped tones, like I do here, where the decay and release is the same co concept, because sustain is on 0% anyway, so you want the it to be consistent, that's very useful. But as you can see, my sequence has lots of various note lengths. So I would like that to be a little bit more prominent in the way the signal is shaped. So I can dial in some sustain and disable the linking so that I can make the decay time shorter. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's rather do something like this. Let's see. <laughs> So many different flavors are possible like that. You can also turn the entire wave around. Um, that's sometimes useful for side chaining, for example, or if you want to make an inverted thing to something that you made before. Now, what else can I talk about? There is this button which turns all of the time parameters in the envelope to um, tempo sync related ones. That can be pretty cool for a techie sequ sequence as well.
kind of funny because now um, the attack time and the re release time together um, kind of now make these nodes appear a little bit quieter because there is not enough time to play them with such short attack times and stuff. Um, a very interesting effect. And uh, you can also dial in velocity sensitivity, which I cannot demonstrate right now because this sequence does not have varying velocity. It would also sound not, not sound very nice on this one, I think. But um, oh well, maybe, maybe it would sound nice here. So let's try that. <laughs> I gotta say I'm a little bit confused right now because it did not react to the velocity that I set here. Maybe it's because the nodes are so close together or something. Maybe there is still a little bit of a bug in this plugin when that's the case. But um, I cannot change that now. That is a little bit mu too much of a rabbit hole right now. However, even without the velocity sensitivity feature, this plugin has a lot to offer, as you can see. It just takes a little bit of time to set up in Cubase, and that's why I made this video. <laughs>